Hi, I'm Perry Romanowski, back with another video about cosmetic formulating. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can create a close approximation of a formula from a list of ingredients. If you recall from our last video, I took you through the six steps needed to make a cosmetic formula. And in that video, I mentioned that one of the ways to get a starting formula was to use a competitor's list of ingredients, or LOI as we call it in the business. So this time, I want to dive deeper into that topic and show you exactly how it's done. So the first step is to find a list of ingredients. In most cosmetic markets in the world, companies are required to list their ingredients on their products. This is done to help consumers know what they are putting on their bodies and can help them avoid ingredients which they might have negative reactions to. It's a very really important legislation. This is great for consumers, but it's also great for cosmetic formulators because it gives you important clues as to how to create any cosmetic formula. So the first thing you have to do is to find the list of ingredients of a product you want to duplicate. In the age of the internet, this is much easier than it used to be. In the old days, we had to go to the store and then hope we could find samples of the product and they'd have the LOI. But now you can just go on the internet and do a search. My two favorite places to find LOIs is drugstore.com and ulta.com. There are other sources, but this is good to get you started. For this example, I'm going to show you how to duplicate a shampoo formula. Here is the list of ingredients. Now you can see there is water, ammonium lauryl sulfate, ammonium chloride, and, and more. If the company is following the proper labeling rules of the cosmetic industry, then this is going to be accurate information and very helpful. So step two is to figure out what the important ingredients are. After you have that LOI, you need to analyze it to figure out which ingredients are crucial to the function of the formula, and then which ones are less important. Now to do this, it is extremely helpful to know the rules related to uh, labeling cosmetic ingredients. And the most important rule for that purposes is ingredients must be listed in order of concentration for any ingredient greater than 1% of concentration. This means that the ingredient in the formula above 1% are the most important, while the ones lower than 1% are less important, and the ones above have to be in order. So every ingredient listing, there is a 1% line, and to duplicate a formula, you need to find that 1% line in the listing. To be able to do this, it takes a certain knowledge of the raw materials, the product form, and the relative percentages. We go through this in a lot of detail in our Practical Cosmetic Formulating course. For the listing in our example, we need to find the 1% line. Since I know that shampoos are mostly water, say 85 to 90%, it's not surprising that water is the first ingredient. I also know that ammonium lauryl sulfate is the primary detergent, so it is certainly in the formula above 1%. And scanning through the list, I see tetrasodium EDTA. Now this is a chelating agent used in formulas, and I know it's never used at 1%, so the 1% line must be prior to the tetrasodium EDTA. This means we can pretty much ignore everything from EDTA after, which gives us the most important ingredients. So the most important ingredients are water, ammonium lauryl sulfate, ammonium chloride, cocamide MEA, fragrance, PEG-5 cocamide, and hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. We may be able to pare this formula down even further because, you know, it's unlikely that the fragrance is in the formula at a percent higher than 1%, but for these purposes, we'll just assume that it is. Now, step three is to guess at the ingredient levels based on the label position. Now that we know which ingredients are crucial, we have to take a guess. If we start with the assumption that the last ingredient is in the formula at 1%, then the rest of the ingredients must be in at levels that are higher than that. Since I know the basic structure of a shampoo, I can make a guess as to what this formula might look like. So here is one such guess. We've got water at 81%. Ammonium lauryl sulfate at 12%, ammonium chloride at 1.9%, cocamide MEA at 1.5%, fragrance at 1.2%, the cocamide at 1.1%, and the hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose at 1%. Now this isn't probably exactly the formula they use, but it's close enough to start. So with this, we can move on to the next step, which is adding important secondary ingredients. 
The formula we put together so far would be a good basis for the first prototype, but there were ingredients we left off because they didn't reach the 1% level. And while these ingredients aren't important in terms of the functionality, they are often crucial in terms of making a formula that's working and that's safe. For example, things like preservatives, colors, and adjustment ingredients, they need to be included in formulas. In this formula, there are a number of adjustment ingredients that we should include. Now, these would be tetrasodium EDTA, which is a chelating agent that helps the preservative work, DMDM hydantoin, which is the preservative, and citric acid, which is going to help adjust the pH. You could also include the color if you want to match the color of the product, but it's not crucial. The other ingredient in the formula include claims ingredients, which are not necessary for making a functional product. Things like vitamin E and algae extract, they're just added for the story and not expected to do anything. So you can pretty much ignore these ingredients. Some approximate percentages of these ingredients would be tetrasodium EDTA at about 0.5%, DMDM hydantoin at about 2.2% and citric acid at a half a percent. That color can be added as desired, but it's always going to be less than 0.1%. So let's put it all together and see what the formula would look like. To accommodate the secondary ingredients, we have to adjust the water levels from what we had before. So our first prototype formula would look maybe something like this. So this is just a compilation of all the ingredients and a guess at what their levels would be. So then we can move on to the next step, which is making the prototype. Now that we have all the ingredients figured out, it's time to, to make that prototype. To do this, you have to figure out the order in which the ingredients are added. Here again is where it is helpful to know something about the raw materials and how to formulate with them. In this formula, as in most formulas, when water is the most abundant ingredient, it is added to your container first. And if you have dyes, you usually add dyes next. Since hydroxypropyl methylcellulose is a thickening polymer that requires time to go into solution, this would be the second thing that is added. Other powder ingredients like citric acid and tetrasodium EDTA can also be added up front. And in general, you want to add your powders sooner in the process than later. This formula contains cocamide MEA, which is a solid at room temperature, so the formula is going to have to be heated up past the melting point of that ingredient to get it to go into solution properly. So after we have added the powders, we can begin heating up the formula while mixing it. Now as it heats up, we can add the ammonium lauryl sulfate. When the formula gets to the melting point of cocamide MEA, which is about 60 degrees C, we can add this and mix for another 10 minutes or so until it is dispersed. Now it's really good to heat the formula up to a few degrees higher than the melting point, so we're going to take this to 70 C because that's going to make more sense. Next, we cool the batch down to below 45 C and then add the remaining ingredients. The fragrance gets blended with the PEG-5 cocamide, which acts as a solubilizer. This blend is then added to the formula. Finally, the DMDM hydantoin is added and the batch is cooled. These final ingredients are added when the batch is cooler because they are heat sensitive and they can break down if you heat them up too much, so we want them to stay cool. Now, if you want to match the color of the product, you can, of course, add color at the end if you care to. Finally, you add the salt. Salt is added at the end because it can have a thickening effect on the formula, and if you add it too soon, you'll get these bubbles in which the formula and throughout is aerated and it's not good. So the last step would be testing and refining this. Once you've finished your prototype, you can compare it to the product that you are copying. You know, compare things like the pH, the viscosity, the appearance. You should also test functional things, such as how well it foams for a shampoo formula like this anyway. Now, you'll probably have to refine the formula, increasing the level of ingredients or decreasing them as needed, but this will get you pretty close to a starting formula. So let's summarize the five steps of creating a formula from an LOI. First, you've got to find the LOI. Next, you've got to figure out which are the most important ingredients. Next, you've got to figure out a percentage of those most important ingredients. And the fourth step is figuring out which secondary ingredients are important. And then the fifth step is 
putting together the actual prototype. And step six is testing and refining that formula until you get something that matches the benchmark. The thing I want you to notice about this system is that it is something that anyone with a little bit of knowledge about the ingredients and the basic formulation structure can do. Now in our practical cosmetic formulating course, you can learn what you need to know about raw materials, formulation types, and structures, and then how to put it all together. If you are interested in making your own cosmetic formulas, getting a cosmetic science career, or just learn how to formulate, then the Practical Cosmetic Formulating course will be perfect for you. Just click on the link below to learn more. The Practical Cosmetic Formulating course is open now, but we will be closing to new students when the course is full, which based on the number of students we have now, is gonna be at the end of this month. So if you wanna join now, it's the time to do it. So just click the link below. Now I hope you have enjoyed these videos and you found them helpful. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I'm Perry Romanowski and I look forward to working with you.